I've got a challenge for you. Now we all know that the area of a triangle is half of the base times the height. But if I asked you, why does it work for this triangle? Could you actually explain it? We're gonna find out how to do that after the intro. Hi, my name's Tom Moore. Now I'm gonna share a problem with you that had me perplexed for over 20 years. In fact, it takes me right back to kindergarten when I was working with different shapes and just playing around with them. And what I noticed was when working with triangles, if I moved them around like this, I was actually able to make some triangles come together to form a rectangle. So what this actually showed me was that the area of this triangle was really half the area of the rectangle that had the same base and height. But then when I played with other triangles, like these ones here, I realized that it didn't always work because I could rearrange them like you can see here and here and here and it just never actually ever wanted to make a rectangle. So this had me confused because I knew it worked for some triangles but not for others. In this video, I'm going to show you how to demonstrate to students that the area of a triangle is always half times the base times the height, regardless of whether you work with one of these triangles, that is a right angle triangle, an acute angle triangle, or even an obtuse angle triangle. And this one here is the hardest one to operate with. So as we've seen, when dealing with right angle triangles, it's really quite straightforward to see that the area of a triangle is half times the base times the height because when you can see the base and the height of this rectangle, the area of the triangle will simply be half of that. So we won't spend much more time on that. When looking at one of these triangles though, that is an acute angle triangle, it becomes a little bit more challenging. And there are at least a couple of ways to explain this. For example, you can see here, I've got my triangle. I can grab a piece of grid paper and I can demonstrate here that this triangle here has just been drawn around the outside of this one there. Now, what I've done is I've actually gone and made a rectangle using these three points as key points to draw this. Now, if I draw this part down here, a little dotted line, what you can see is that the area of this part of the triangle is going to be half of the area of this rectangle. And the area of this part of the triangle will also be half of the area of this rectangle. So therefore, the area of the triangle will be half of the area of this rectangle that has the same base and height as the triangle. There's also one more way to demonstrate this. And that is, if I bring this in here, now, if I flip this over, you can actually see the height of this triangle. So that is, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 centimeters. And if I go through and I cut this triangle in half, so that is halfway up the height, so I'll flip this over here, at six centimeters. So one, two, three, four, five, six. If I cut it in half, and then at that point, I go straight down from the point of the triangle, from the very top point, and cut it in half like that, I'll then be able to have four pieces. And I can use these four pieces to rearrange them and make them into a rectangle. I'll show you what I mean. If I move this part down here, and this part over here, you can see that the area of the triangle is actually equal to the area of this rectangle. So I go like this, and once again, I move them down, they're going to have the same area. But what's the area of this rectangle? Well, it's going to be half of the height times the base. So once again, it's half times base times height. So there we have it. We've looked now at the right angle triangle and also the acute angle triangle. But how about the obtuse angle triangle? This is the one that had me stumped for over 20 years. I'll show you how to do it. Let's move these out of the way. Now, when dealing with obtuse angle triangles, it's actually a little bit more challenging. Here's my obtuse angle triangle here. If we have a look at it, it's really hard to demonstrate why the area of this triangle is also half times the base times the height. You can try and cut it like we did before, but remember the height is from here to here. And so cutting up there like that and rearranging, it actually doesn't work. Whereas if we come along here and we grab this, and I put this on top here, you can see it's exactly the same size triangle and I've drawn around like I did before. Once again, you'll see that it's really difficult to show that the area of this triangle is half of the area of this rectangle because this here looks to be less than that, but this part here looks to be a little bit more than half of that. So once again, it's not really clear cut. This is how we demonstrate it. If I get my obtuse angle triangle and I make another obtuse angle triangle just like it, 
I can then use both of these to rearrange them and put them together so they make a parallelogram. If I have this parallelogram here, which is exactly the same size and shape as these obtuse angled triangles, I can grab this and I can go, my base is here and my height is here, so I can grab this here and move it over to there, which makes a rectangle as you'll see. And of course the area of this rectangle will be base times the height. So if this parallelogram is exactly the same size and area as two of these obtuse angled triangles, then one obtuse angled triangle will be half the area of this parallelogram. And we know that the area of the parallelogram is equal to the area of the rectangle. So of course, this obtuse angled triangle is half the area of the rectangle. Now whilst I've demonstrated this activity for you and told you about my struggles, it's really important that you allow students to play with the triangles themselves in order to really understand that the area of a triangle is actually half times the base times the height. I mean you could just tell them, but that takes away the understanding that they can really develop for themselves. Now when you start off, give them the right angle triangle to start with because you can see here it's really quite easy to be able to demonstrate why it is actually half times base times height. But then work up towards the acute angle triangles because once they do that, there are a few different ways to be able to demonstrate this. And if students are really good, try and get them to find multiple ways to demonstrate it so that they really understand why it is that the area of a triangle is half times the base times the height. Once they've done that, give them the challenge of trying to figure out if this is actually true for an obtuse angle triangle and why this is the case. Because this has less ways to be able to demonstrate this. It'll give them a nice challenge and also it'll help them to really understand how triangles connect to different shapes such as parallelograms and rectangles and other quadrilaterals. Now whilst I've made my triangles out of wood, there are plenty of other cost efficient and time efficient ways to run this activity. For example, you could use mini whiteboards or you could get students to make their triangles out of paper. In fact, don't cut up the mini whiteboards, your head of maths will not appreciate that. The other thing to consider is when doing this activity, it's really important to ensure that students understand how to find the area of different quadrilaterals before actually trying to find the area of triangles. You also notice that at the very beginning of this video, I talked about how I struggled with this concept of finding the area of an obtuse angled triangle. The reason I told you this was because it's important that we allow students to see how it can sometimes take a long time to really understand a concept. And in fact, we're always lifelong learners. Hey, you're still here, don't go anywhere. Remember to like, comment and subscribe and also don't forget to share this video with your colleagues so that they can use it within their classes too. My name's Tom Moore, we'll see you next time.